I've been picking out some really pretty garden design ideas from the latest BBC Gardeners World Live. And they're also very affordable, they're quite money saving, and that's because sustainability and recycling and upcycling is at the heart of the show this year. So I'm going to pick out the ideas that I think would work best in real gardens. It's Alexandra here from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog. And if you're new here, the Middle Sized Garden uploads weekly with tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden. So if you'd like to see the videos when you open up YouTube, tap subscribe. One of the first ideas that I saw as soon as I got there was the idea of mixing pavers. Now, Landscaping is very expensive and the material is expensive and having it installed is expensive but being able to mix patterns does definitely save money. I saw this on several stands but particularly the Marshalls one. For example it means you can buy perhaps small lots, leftovers, leftovers from other jobs. You can often get things that have been on other people's gardens and are being dug up on any of the online markets. It also means you don't have to do everything at once if you haven't got the money to really make that big terrace that you wanted. You can actually add to it over the years or you can add an extra path in the garden. And the other thing about mixing pavers is that it can also be helpful in terms of flooding. If you've got a very small garden and it's very shady, it'll be difficult to keep grass there. But if you've got a mix of pavers and gravel, then the water runoff will go through the gravel rather than if you pave it or concrete it completely, then you could finish up with flooding problems. And this sort of mixing also works elsewhere in the garden. For example, on this metamorphosis garden, which was designed by Rachel Pratt and Mike Baldwin. And Mike, by the way, has got his own YouTube channel. It's called Mike Baldwin 007, if you want to check it out. They mixed both the wood and the pebbles to create this. It's actually a caterpillar that goes around the garden, but it's a design effect. And Mike did tell me that this was quite complicated. It was done by the students of Derby College but you could do a pattern on the side of raised beds or fencing in a less complicated way using different materials. A friend of mine, for example, actually uses mosaic tiles. And one garden which was made almost entirely of second-hand and reused things was the Old is Gold garden. And that reused old doors as fencing. It is worth saying that if you just plonk wood on the ground, obviously it will rot quite easily. So you would have to think about what the old doors were fixed into. But it's an interesting idea. And of course, when it comes to garden furniture, then second-hand garden furniture can be cheaper. And on this old is gold garden, the patio chairs and table are of a very common pattern that was very widely available throughout the UK. I think possibly less so now. I think the thing to look at if you are buying second-hand garden furniture is just check that it's stable. And there's another great reusing here from Frances Tophill in Frances's garden. She has made an entire greenhouse full of old windows. I've covered this once or twice before and I'll put those videos in the description below. And one is about city gardens and it was a skip garden, a temporary garden, created during the development of King's Cross. And it was a greenhouse created by architecture students of lots and lots of little old windows. But when the gardeners actually came to use that greenhouse, they said that the proportion of glass to the frame of the window was slightly wrong to use it as a greenhouse because there, was, there were such little old windows that you had an awful lot of frame and an awful lot of crossbars and it wasn't great for seedlings. But it was a fabulous space and they loved it. But I covered this idea also on another video from Australia about tips from a medium-sized garden. And this one, he had made his greenhouse from second-hand doors, shower doors and windows, but they were modern. So there was actually quite a lot of glass in each window frame. So in fact, he's found that works very well as a greenhouse. Now, neither of those greenhouses were made by professionals. There were the architecture students in the Skip Garden and indeed the Australian one, he is, I think, a lawyer by profession, uh, but he enjoys DIY. So that they're not an easy job, but they certainly are one that you could tackle. Because the show had a theme of sustainability and wildlife friendliness, there was a pond in every show garden. And there were ponds of lots and lots of different types. And for us gardeners, I think it's really helpful that ponds are now taking over from water features. Ten years ago, if I'd gone to a show, I would have seen a water feature on practically every garden. But garden designers are telling me that water features, above all, are more likely to go wrong than anything else in the garden. And it can be quite problematic when clients ask for one. However, ponds really don't go wrong, even quite small ones. Seven years ago, I made 
a mini pond in an oak barrel and it was before I started the YouTube channel so but there's a blog post that I'll put in the description below and in those seven years it has been no trouble at all I promise you I have done absolutely no maintenance however I did learn that shallow ponds or small ponds like ponds in containers do dry out quite quickly in hot weather or dry weather and you will need to top them up Ideally, top them up from a water butt because rainwater is better in ponds than tap water is. But of course, if you're having a dry spell, that may not be possible. So what you can do is fill a couple of watering cans and let them stand for 24 hours and the chemicals evaporate off and the water temperature then returns to whatever the air is, which means that the little creatures that will have taken up residence in the mini pond won't be shocked by a change in temperature. The other thing to bear in mind with ponds is obviously you need to make sure that babies and toddlers don't have access to them because they can drown in a few inches of water. And because of this, I really quite liked a couple of ponds I saw on raised beds. They were both quite shallow, but having them in the raised bed, surrounded by planting or even by wildlife friendly features like bug hotels, means you could enjoy seeing the birds land on them and you can enjoy the pond, whereas a very small pond, perhaps at foot level, you might not see so much of. And in Frances Tophill's Frances's garden, she put together a whole load of old sinks, recycling them. Now you could do this with any containers, and the advantage of having lots of different containers all put together is that you can have different kinds of plants in each one of them. You can have plants that like quite shallow water in some sinks, and then you can have quite deep water in others. I thought this Francis's garden really was very pretty. And it also had a much larger water feature, which was some agricultural tanks, a big high tank and then a smaller tank with an overflow coming from the big high tank. I've seen tanks like this at gardens like Great Dixter, and the advantage of them is that you can just dip your watering can in them. You don't have to wait for a water butt or a tap to fill the watering can. It's a quick dip in and out. So this is actually quite a nice practical gardening tip. I was particularly pleased to see shrubs used in a contemporary way in some of these gardens because show gardens at the moment seem to be so focused on perennials or wildflowers or annuals. And the thing is about shrubs is, I mean, they're money saving because you buy them once, they grow and they last very often for years and years. Shrubs, of course, are woody plants that stay above the ground all year round. Sometimes they lose their leaves in winter, so they're deciduous shrubs, otherwise they're evergreen shrubs. But they have fallen out of favour. But there were some really nice contemporary uses of shrubs. And in this garden, what I thought was very good is she was planting the shrub in gravel. More and more parts of the world are suffering from water shortages. And going the gravel garden way is a very good option. And in this garden, there's a shrub called Circus canadensis, which was a plant of the year last year and was seen in quite a few gardens at BBC Gardeners World Live. And there are also old favourites like Flomus rosselliana, and they do look more contemporary sitting in gravel. Formium is another old fashioned shrub with the spiky leaves. And this was paired with some pretty perennial planting and I thought that looked good as well. Another thing is mixed hedging. I've been seeing this in show gardens, I saw it in RHS Chelsea, and it's generally becoming much more widespread, is to use mixed hedging rather than hedge of one particular kind. And also to keep it quite loose, like this one in Francis Tophill's Francis's Garden, rather than clipping it into a tight form. Now this is about wildlife friendliness, because a mixed hedge will have lots of different things in it, so you're more likely to have flowers and berries. All hedges provide shelter, Evergreen hedges provide shelter all year round. And the thing about hedges is that although it does take up more space than a fence, it nevertheless gives you a slightly more enclosed feeling and it does feel more private, even if you can't, because of local laws, take it any higher than a fence. It slightly muffles sound as well. And just because it can't always be all about money saving, we all need something to dream about. I thought I'd mention the natural swimming pool at BBC Gardeners World Live. A natural swimming pool is, I think, more complicated to install than an ordinary swimming pool, but once it's installed, it's easier to maintain and cheaper because you're not having to add chemicals every week. And it has a sort of balance that it more or less keeps. And of course, it's fabulous for wildlife and it looks very pretty. So it's certainly a very big ticket item but I just like to dream occasionally. I'll put more garden design ideas from the shows at the, in a playlist at the end of this video. Let me know what you think and thank you for watching. Goodbye.